Good morning, Ely. Good morning, teacher. Hi, Gabriela. How are you? Fine, fine. Excellent. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but I guess I was, um, I clicked in another thing. All right. But I'm happy you're here. Hi, Araceli. Good morning. Morning. How are you morning. today? Good. Excellent. All right. I'm sorry, guys, about that. I don't know what happened. I guess I clicked something else. It's Monday. <laughs> All right. So how are you, Eliana? How was your weekend? Good morning, teacher. Good morning. It was fine. Was it was fine? Did you rest or yes. did you work? Uh, no, I'm rested. You rested? All right. Very good. Yeah. All right. That's nice. What about Exa? How are you, Exa? How was your weekend? Oh, good morning. Well, a little tired because I'm working in my house. Oh, really? All weekend? I, yes, I, I repair a wall. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, my goodness. So that, that makes you tired. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Very good. So you took advantage of the weather. It wasn't raining, right? So it was good to yeah. work in the house. That's nice. Very good. All right, very good. I see we have Sofia and we also have Veronica coming in. So that's very nice. I really hope you had a great weekend although you got tired and, and things like that, but at least you got to do different things. So that's very nice. So let's hope this week is going to be better as weather-wise. I don't know if it's supposed to rain anymore, but I don't know. Some people say there's another uh, rain coming. I don't know if that's true or not, but let's hope we can finish this anyway. All right, so we have this week on Monday, the following, like a week from today, is going to be our last class of the year, all right? So make sure guys that you are working on the platform and everything. Okay, so we're gonna continue with uh, expressions or models of prohibition, obligation, and permission. Last class, last Friday, we were talking about um, things that you can do, things that you're allowed to do, and things that you have to do, all right? So Ileana, can you share what you can do, what you're allowed to do, and what you have to do? I have to do work. Okay, you have to work? I have to work. All right, yes, okay. I have to work. And I am allowed. Oh. Yeah, allowed. What are you allowed to allowed? do? Mm -hmm. Allowed uh, drive. Oh, you're allowed to drive. Yeah, very good. Yes. Okay, and what can you do as in permission wise? Not ability, but what can you do? I can, I don't know, I can, I can take a shower. <laughs> you can take a shower, yes, of course you can. <laughs> and that's very good, uh, Eliana, very nice. Let's see, Exa, what can you do, what are you allowed to do, and what do you have to do? Just one. Uh, just tell me one of each, yes, please. Well, we can sing a song in the karaoke. Okay, yes. Uh, allow, uh, in some words, you could eat some snack in the office. All right, you're allowed to eat, yes, uh huh. You're allowed to eat some snack, and you have to use masks for the COVID or pandemic. Yeah, very good. You have to. Now that's an obligation. Thank you, Excel. Those are very nice examples. All right, let's see, Araceli, what can you think about things that you can do, things that you have to do, and things that you're allowed to do? Um, sorry, teacher, but I, I don't understand it. All right, that's okay, that's okay, that's fine. Let's see, uh, Sophia, were you in class last Friday? Yeah, Araceli, you were not in class last Friday, right? I just remember. Yes, I yeah, am. okay. Sophia, can you tell us what you can do, what you're allowed to do, and what you have to do? I can play, I can play Uno. Okay, okay. I have to eat every day. That's right. And I... And what are you allowed to do? I allowed to 
take some breaks in the work. Oh, very nice. Very good. All right. Thank you, Sophia. Okay. So for the ones that are joining us and were not in class last Friday, we're talking about models, uh, model verbs or expressions that refer to permission, obligation, and what's the other one? And prohibition. Prohibition. All right. Yes. All right. So we have three. Uh, permission, prohibition, and obligation. We will talk about these ones, all right, and some of them are the same. For example, can and can't, allowed to or not allowed to, all right, so that's for uh, permission and prohibition. And the other one is obligation, and we're going to talk about have to and have got to, all right? So this is what we're talking about. I'm gonna take you right now to the video on the platform. I just want you to see something here, all right? Can you guys see this? All right, this is on your platform, this is 4.8. You're talking about permission, obligation, and prohibition, all right? If you notice here, we have the column for permission, and we have the column of prohibition, and they're using the same ones. They're using can and can't, allow to and not allow to, all right? The, to express permission and to express prohibition. Now to express obligation, in this case, we're gonna talk about have to and have got to, but must is also an obligation. When you say you must go to work, that's your obligation, all right? But in this case, we're not gonna talk about must, all right, we're only concentrating on these two, but you know that must also refers to obligation, all right? Or when you say you need to do it, all right? In a way, you're being obligated to do it, all right? But it's also like, an, uh, like a, a suggestion in a way, you need to do this, all right? But it's in a way also an obligation. But right now, we're gonna be concentrating on have to and have got to, all right? So we have these three, all right? If you notice here, this one, be careful guys, because we're talking about permission, not about ability, all right? If I say I can swim, I'm using can, but for ability, expressing that I am, that I can swim, right? I can do this activity. That is talking about my ability of doing something. But when I'm talking about using can for permission, the context is a little bit different, all right? For example, I can say I can uh, go out uh, on a break at 10 in the morning at my job, all right? That's a permission. All right, because I am allowed to take a break at that time. All right, so it's very, the, in this case, the word can is the same for ability and permission, but not the context. Okay, it will depend a lot on the context and what you're talking about, all right? Now, so we have can and allow to. With this one, you have to be careful with allow to, because the structure is subject plus be plus allow to always so you cannot say for example he allowed to go you have to say he is allowed to go all right or you say you uh you allowed to come to the office no you have to say you are allowed to come to the office so you need to make reference to the verb be all the time all right so the structure is be allowed to when i say be allowed to that means that you're going to conjugate it depending on the person you're talking about. If I say I, I would have to say, I am allowed to speak Spanish in uh, basic classes, all right? I have the permission to do it. I am not allowed to speak Spanish on intermediate three class, all right? Because you guys understand already, okay? So you have to always remember that you have to use, if, you're, if you want to use allowed to, you have to use be allowed to. Um, is, are, depending on the subject you're talking about, okay? Now, these ones, of course, are affirmative, all right, because it's a permission that you're given, all right? And the prohibition, which are the same, can't and aren't allowed to, all right, they are negative because you're not allowed to do something. So I can say, for example, you can't smoke in class you're not allowed to use your cell phone, all right? So it's negative because it's a prohibition, 
I'm telling you not to do it, all right? Or at your job, you say, I am not allowed to um, see my, check my Facebook when I'm working, all right? You're not allowed to do that, all right? Now, I don't know if it's true or not at your job, but let's see. Um, Carlita, Carla Beatriz, can you tell me something you are not allowed to do at your job that you cannot do? You are not allowed to do it. Um, okay. Uh, I can't. Uh, well, suppose I can't uh, eat uh, on my on my schedule. Job okay. schedule. All right. Okay. Very good. You can't. All right. Very good. Uh, let's see. Giovanni. Hi, Giovanni. Good morning. Giovanni. Hi. 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 Nice to have you in class. Very nice. All right, Giovanni. Can you tell us something that you are not allowed to do at your job? Something that is true. Something that you say, no, I, I, I'm not allowed to do this at my job. No, teacher. Okay, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Let's see. Someone that can help me here. Uh, I don't know, Ileana or Araceli or Exa, Gabi. Something. Think about something that you're not allowed to do at your job. I can go to my your my job in uh, informal dress. Oh, in, you're in not very good. You're not allowed to uh, wear informal clothing. All right, very good, Francisco. Nice, yeah, me, me neither. I'm not allowed to wear jeans at the academy. Very good, when we go. Right now, yes, but not at the academy. All right, very good. Something that is something else that you guys are not allowed to do at your job. We are allowed to fight with my partners. <laughs> <laughs> very good, yeah. Exa, very nice, you're not allowed to fight. Very good, or to be mean, right? Very good, something else that you're not allowed to do. I'm not allowed uh, absent. Oh, okay. You're be not absent. Yeah, you're not allowed. Excellent. You're not allowed to be absent. Very good. All right. For non excuse reasons. Very good. Gabi, can you think of another sentence that you're not allowed to do at your job? Um, I don't know, it's example, right? Yeah, it's an example. Um, I can't uh, uh, speak with my partners. I don't okay, know. you're not allowed to speak with your partners or you're not allowed to talk to your partners when you're working, all right? Very good. So there are many, many rules or many things that you guys or we are allowed to do and not to do, all right? Are we allowed to drink alcohol and drive? Guys, in general, are we allowed to drink alcohol and drive at the same time? No. Oh, no. no. no, no. I mean, no. some people do it, but it's not allowed to, all right? Um, are like people under 18 allowed to smoke? No. No, all right, so there are many prohibitions that we have, all right. Um, are you allowed to, um, I don't know, are you allowed to um, speak Spanish in class? <laughs> Maybe. Oh. Maybe, oh no, Carlita, what happened, all right, okay, yeah, you're allowed to, all right, but you shouldn't, okay, but that's, that's different, all right. So here we have the difference between can and allowed to. If you ask me, Jessica, what is the difference between can and allowed to? There isn't really a difference. The meaning is the same, all right? The meaning is exactly the same. It depends which one you want to use, all right? But we're gonna see that right now. I'm gonna show you the presentation here. All right, so we have this one. As permission, obligation, and prohibition. We saw this one the other day, all right? Like features. I was reminding you of the Yes. Will you send the presentation? Yeah, today I will, I promise. All right, very good. Thank you. Okay. I ask, <laughs> I always ask because uh, 
if you send a presentation, I I can pay attention. Yes, uh, I more know. constantly <laughs> in the class. <laughs> that's why, and, yeah, that's and why. And no, not take my ideas in, in, a, in a word. Right. Way, so. No, I understand. I will send it today. I will send the okay, ones thanks. that I owe you, all right? This one is thanks. the same. Yeah, you know, you're welcome. This is the same one I used on Friday. I mean, we begin to use it. So I have, I think I have to send you two, I, 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 two, two presentations, but I will. Okay, so here, this is what I want you to see today, all right? So we have the prohibitions. Don't do it. It is forbidden. You understand the word forbidden? Do you understand forbidden? Yes, it is. It's no permission. Yeah, you're not permitted to. All right. I forbid you to speak Spanish. All right. So I'm kidding. All right. So it's a, it's a prohibition. All right. You're not allowed to do this. All right. So when you're expressing prohibition, you have to use uh, can't. That's it. I can't, you can't, he can't, they can't, we can't, nobody can, all right? We can't, uh, I don't know, come late to work, for example, all right? Or you say you're not allowed to. Watch it, guys. Here, you're using, because it's prohibition, you're using it in negative, all right? And you have the verb be here. You have to have it, okay? Or another way to express prohibition is you're not permitted to, and that's okay. So you may use can't, be not allowed to, or you can use not permitted to. Whichever one of these, it's okay. On the platform, they're only, uh, they only showing you can't and not allowed to, all right? But not permitted, for example, you say, I'm not permitted to come late to work, and it's okay. I'm not allowed to come late to work. I can't come late to work. So the three ideas are the same, okay? Now, if you notice, pay attention to this. This is the same for everybody. That's why it says verb one, because you don't have to conjugate it, right? Not allowed to. It's the same for everybody except the use of verb be. Depends if you're going to talk about he, I, or she, or whatever. You're going to conjugate it with the right person. And the same thing happens with this one. You have to use the verb be plus not permitted to, but the rest is the same. He's not permitted to, I am not permitted to, they are not permitted to, you are not permitted to. It's the same thing for everyone, all right? This is when we're expressing prohibition, all right? You can use can't, be not allowed to, or be not permitted to, all right? Something that is forbidden, something that you can't do, all right? Here we keep on talking about models of permission. Can someone read this one for me? Me teacher. Yes, please. Models permission. You can use can to say to someone is allowed to do something. You use can't, cannot to say that they are not allowed to do it. Student can take a year away from university. Children cannot bait mm -hmm. except in the presence of two lifesavers. Lifesavers, all right, very good. So here, thank you. So here, you're, um, they are telling you, like, you can use can for permission and can't for prohibition, cannot, all right? If you take a look at the examples, you say students can take a year away from university, all right, they are allowed to do it. They have the permission to do it. And on the second example, you say, for example, you go to a swimming pool or the beach, and they say children cannot bathe except in the presence of two lifesavers, all right? So if there's only one, children are not allowed to go in and bathe, all right? So that is a prohibition. So between permission and prohibition, is you're using the same one, excepting negative. For permission is affirmative, and for, prohibi for uh, prohibition is negative. All right. Someone else to continue reading this for me. Me, teacher. Thank you. Teacher. Yes. Okay, model permission. You also use be allowed to when you are talking about permission, but not if you are asking for it or giving giving it. When Mr. Will asks for a solicitor, mm -hmm. solicitor. He will be allowed to see one. 
okay. you're not allowed to use calculators uh, during the exam. Very good. All right. Thank you. Okay. So you also use be allowed to, and here's what I'm telling you about, you know, you have to use be allowed to. So I'm, is, are. When you're talking about permission, but not if you're asking for it or giving it. This one, like allowed to, is more like um, expressing an idea more than asking for permission. All right, you say, can I go to the bathroom? You're not, you don't really say, am I allowed to go to the bathroom? That's not really common, all right? That's why it's saying here, you cannot really ask, use it for asking or giving permission. It's just a statement. You're not allowed to eat in class, for example, all right? It's a, it's an, it's an, a statement, all right? If you want to ask, you can say, can I eat in class? All right, it's better used than am I allowed to eat in class? So it's like, you know, it's the usage of it. All right, so here, for example, can someone read the, uh, what it says at the bottom? Here, can you guys see the example right here? Can you read it? Customers okay. are not allowed to enter. Excellent, customers are not allowed to enter, all right? So this is like a statement saying people cannot enter here, only employees, all right? All right, here. Well, let's, let's, um, I want you guys to do this. We're not gonna go to any group right now. Can you do it here, all right? Permission be allowed to. We use am, is, are allowed to, to talk about permission in the present. I'm allowed to study with friends. Then, of course, you have was or will or won't be allowed to. Those are talking about permissions in the past and permissions in the future. All right. So this is just a reference for you guys. And the exercise relates to that. So I'll give you like two minutes so you can work on it. All right. He wasn't allowed to play outside yesterday. Is that OK or not? You have to find the mistake in each sentence. All right. Is that sentence OK? Check it and then tell me. You can do number two, three, four, and five here in this group, and then we can check what you have as an answer. All right, finished? Yeah. 
All right, very good. What about the rest? You guys finished? I'll give you one more minute. All right, let's try to check these ones right now. So for number one, he wasn't allowed to play outside yesterday. Is that correct or did you find a mistake? A mistake. What is the mistake? Was or wasn't. Was. Wasn't be allowed. Ah, all right. What do you guys think? What about the rest of you? Square. Mm -hmm. When um, he wasn't allowed to play outside yesterday. Okay. Exa, what do you think? We weren't. Weren't. Were. All right. Yes. All right. We weren't allowed to play outside yesterday. Why weren't? Because to begin with, we're talking about yesterday. All right. Plus, we're talking about we. All right. So we need to conjugate. We were not allowed to play outside yesterday, all right? You don't need to write the B because when it says B, you need to conjugate it. And if you have weren't or wasn't, all right, you're conjugating it already, okay? So you cannot repeat it, okay? So we weren't allowed to play outside yesterday. What about number two? When I'm older, I'm allowed to buy a car. Anybody for that one? Where but to be in it's okay. the future. So verb be in the future, how would you come up with it then? <coughs> when I am older, I will be to buy a car. Ah, I will be what? Uh -huh. Allowed, very good, yes. When I'm older, I will be allowed Hello. to buy a car. Yes, very good, I will be allowed to buy a car. All right, very good. Number three, who wants to do number three? Children are not allowed to run in the school building. What is the mistake for that one? Children are not allowed to Excellent, run. very good. Children are not allowed to run in the school building. It sounds weird. It sounds like mm, something is missing if you don't have the two. Children are not allowed to run in school building? No, children are not allowed to run in the school building, all right? If you notice the whole thing is together, be allowed to always, all right, very good. Number four, someone to do number four for me. The dog is not allowed to lie in the spa. Excellent, the dog isn't or is not allowed to lie, uh, to lay on the sofa, all right, very good. Number five, who wants to do number five? It's Friday today, so you are allowed to stay up late. Thank you. All right. It's Friday today, although it's Monday, but that's okay. It's Friday today, so you are allowed to stay up late. And you know what? Some of these mistakes are very commonly made. All right. For example, omitting the verb, like the verb be here, are, it's very commonly made. So that's why we have it here. Or omitting the to, allow to run. All right, so you need to remember that this is a full expression. 
be allowed to. It always goes together, all right? So you cannot separate it. It has to be, I'm not allowed to, is not allowed to, are not allowed to, in present, in past, or in future. In this case, of course, we're talking about present. We have some examples here of so future, but that's okay. That's for you to know this, okay? Do you have any questions about these five sentences? Any questions about these five sentences? No, you're okay? All right, very good. Let's go on here. Let's, let's see what else we have here. All right, now complete the second sentences. So it means the same as first. Use the correct for, form of, of be allowed to. Let's see what we have to do here. So number one, where can I put you here? Okay, you can't, uh, you can't any mistakes. The teacher gets angry. All right, you aren't allowed to make any mistakes. So number one, I could borrow my sister's dress. I couldn't borrow my sister's dress for the party, all right? And then you say whatever has to be said. Jenny hopes she can go on vacation with her friends this summer, all right? And number three, she can't eat our lunches in the class. We can't, sorry, we can't eat our lunches in the classroom. So you are supposed to write allowed to, be allowed to in the proper form, all right? So can we try to do number one, two, and three? Again, I will give you like a minute so you guys can solve it and then we can check it together. All right, let's see. So I couldn't borrow my sister's dress for the party. All right, Exa, continue that one. I am not allowed to borrow my sister's dress for the party. All right, okay. All right, anybody else has it differently? Oh, that's okay. You guys agree with Exa's sentence? I agree with Exa. All right, anybody else? I agree. Yeah, Ileana, you have it okay like that? Yeah, all right. It could also be I wasn't allowed to borrow my sister's dress for the party because couldn't it refers to the past, but it's okay. All right, right now you can leave it like that. Very good. Number two, Jenny hopes she can go on vacation with her friends this summer. Jenny hopes that, I mean, Jenny hopes she will be allowed to. Okay, sure. Yeah, because you're talking about this summer. All right, so she, uh, she hopes she will be allowed to go on vacation with her friends this summer, all right? Or if you left it in present, it's, all, it's also okay. Number three, we can't eat our lunches in the classroom.
we aren't allowed mm -hmm. to to eat, right? They're excellent. We aren't allowed to eat our lunches in the classroom. All right? Very good. All right, let's continue here with the other ones. Um, just one here. All right, so here we'll keep on talking about, now we're gonna talk about obligations, all right? Permission and prohibition, I told you they are very related because it's either affirmative for permission and for prohibition is negative. But then we have obligations, all right? And then you can see here, obligations is to do it and it's necessary, all right? So one way to express obligations is using have to. You have to work, you have to eat, you have to uh, pay attention, all right? You have to earn money, all right? You have to breathe, those are obligations that we have to do. Another way to express obligations, as I told you before, is using need to or using must, or using have got to, all right? According to the platform, we need to study have to and have got to. But I also wanted you to see that we can use need to and we can use must to express obligation. You must finish the platform. You have to finish the platform. You need to finish the platform. You've got to finish the platform, all right? What am I expressing here? I'm, I am expressing an obligation that you have to do it, all right? So whatever um, verb you want to use or model verb you want to use, it's okay as long as you know that you're expressing obligation, all right? Let's see here. Look at this example. Can someone read the example? This door must remain closed. This door must remain closed. All right. So here is the uh, using of must. It's an obligation. You can, you're not allowed to um, open the door. All right. It, it must remain closed. It has to remain closed. It needs to remain closed. It's got to remain closed. All right. So whatever one you use, you're expressing an obligation. All right. Um, let's see here. Someone that can help me read here. Maybe, I don't know, who wants to read? Uh, Vanya or Giovanni or Francisco, Vero, can someone help me read this part right here, please? Yes, thank you, Vanya. I've got to and have to. Hmm? I've got to and have to means the same. Have got to is more informal. We use have or got. To here to refer to both birds. Continue, have got, Thank you. Have got to and have two forms, affirmative form, had or got to come before the main bird. For example, you have to try this cake. They are so good. It is often contracted, especially in speaking. For example, you will got to, to press very hard on the doorbell. Have or got to cannot be followed by a model bird. For example, we have to take the car to the garage this morning. And thank you, Veronica. And the, the other sentence that I cut it, I cut it off. I'm sorry. It, it, it said, he, we have got to must take the car. You cannot combine have got to or have to with a model verb, all right? Thank you, Vero. So here, what it's saying here is that we have have got to and we have have to, all right? They mean exactly the same. They mean obligation, all right? But have got to is more informal. So that means that when we're talking with friends or relatives or, or coworkers that we trust, then we can also use have got to more than have to, all right? So have to is a little bit more like formal, let's say, more than have got to, all right? So here you can say we use have to or we use have got to uh, to refer to both verbs, all right? What is the structure? What is the affirmative way? What is the affirmative form? We use this have to or have got to comes before the main verb. We're not using a model verb here. We're using a main verb, all right? So you have to try 
these cakes. Try is the main verb. If you notice, have to comes before it, all right? Or you can say, you have got to try these cakes. Either way, it's okay. Have to or have got to is the same, all right? But one of them is a little bit more informal than the other one. However, we have to place these uh, have to or have got to before the verb try in this example, all right? Now, it is often contracted, especially in speaking. I've got to press very, I mean, you've got to press very hard on the doorbell. Instead of saying, you have got to press very hard on the doorbell, that's very long. So we need to contract it. And you say, you've got to press, got to, you've got to press very hard on the doorbell, all right? So you, ne you need to make a contraction here. Which one in this sentence here, guys, which one is the main verb for that sentence? Press. Press, very good, yes, all right? So uh, let's see, Francisco, the second sentence, it says you've got to press very hard on the doorbell. Can you change have got to or have to and tell me the same sentence? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have oh, to press? Excellent, yes. Yeah, you have, uh -huh. continue, Francisco, I'm sorry. Do, do you have to, do you have to, you have to press very hard on the doorbell. Excellent, thank you, all right. What about the first one? Uh, on the first sentence, we're using, uh, you have to try these cakes. Franklin, can you change have to to have got to for this sentence, Franklin? Hi, teacher. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Um, sorry, repeat the yes. again. Yes, please. Oh, yeah, of course. Let's see. You have here. You have to try these cakes. In this sentence, frankly, we're using have to, okay? But I want you to replace have to for have got to and make the same sentence. Yeah, um, I don't know. And some somebody okay. help. Okay. All right. Okay. Help me? Yes. Yes. Go I ahead. Feel. Okay. All right. Uh, um, you have got to try this cake. Excellent, Vanya. Very good. You have got to try these cakes. All right. So here, what we're doing. Thank you, Vanya. Frankly, what we're doing is replacing have to for have got to, and then the rest is the same. You have got to try these cakes. All right. What thank I, you. Yes, thank you. What, what, I, what, what I want you to see is that you can use have to or have got to, and the meaning is exactly the same. All right. Maybe the difference is because have got to is a little bit more informal. So maybe I'm talking to you, I'm talking to a friend, and I say, hey, you gotta try these cakes. They are so good. All right. I'm not talking to my supervisor. I'm not talking to my boss. I'm not talking to someone I don't know, all right? If I say, you have to try these cakes, it's a little bit more formal, all right? So this is affirmative here. Now, what happens, let's see, Gabby. <clears throat> what happens if I say, um, he, and I have to use have to? Will I say he have to try these cakes or do I change it? Again, teacher? Please. Yes, of, yes, of course. If, uh, for example, we're using have to, Gabby, okay? Uh -huh, okay. But I don't want to use you. I want to okay. use Ricardo or he. All okay. right. I say he, and what about this? Is it going to ah, change? Yes, uh, has. Right. Has okay, to. so Ricardo has, has to, to, excellent, right. try these this cakes. Cake. Excellent, very good. So what changes is this, not the rest of it. Or this one doesn't that's change. Yeah, it, it, that's right. It changes because of the third person singular. So I, I say Ricardo has to try these cakes. I say my mom has to try these cakes. Uh, her teacher has to try these cakes, all right? So if you're using third person singular, this will change, but not this, all right? This remains the same, 
All right, now. It, yes? It, it, the same as uh, apply for have to go to, That's right? That's right, yes. I was just about to say that. You read my mind. Very good. So if we have here, very good. If we have here, for example, Araceli, am I going to say Araceli got to press very hard on the doorbell? Or am I going to say Araceli has to uh, has got to press very hard on the doorbell? The what am I going to say? The has. second form. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So uh, she's got. If you contract it, if you make a contraction, all right, you are going to say she's got to press. She's yeah. like she apostrophe s, meaning she has got to. Not she is right. She has got to press very hard on the doorbell. So that one changes. These changes and these changes when you're talking about he, she, it in present, and which you will see that you can only use this form in present tense. All right. We have the negative form. Someone else to read it for me. Negative form. That's right. The negative of have to is formed using do do not. Yeah. Does not, did not, or done, or done, doesn't, didn't. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to uh, pay for the food. Mm, nice. All right. Continue. The negative, mm -hmm. the negative of have to, have, have got, got to, to mm -hmm. is formed by a did not after have. We don't use don't doesn't didn't mm -hmm. we haven't got to pay from the pay for the food not we don't have got to pay for the food excellent thank you all right this is another common mistake we make sometimes all right when we talk about have to all right for example i have to he has to we have to if we can conjugate it or we can use the negative don't if it's present, didn't if it's past, all right? Or doesn't if we're talking about he, she, it. When we talk about have to only, I say, you don't have to come to my party. Uh, he doesn't have to work every day, all right? Or you, I don't know. Or they don't have to pay for internet service, okay? We use don't, but when we use have got to, we're not going to use don't. We're going to use not, all right? And we're going to use it after have, all right? So we have not got to pay for the food. We haven't got to pay for the food. You're not going to use this. This is not okay, guys, all right? You cannot use don't right here. You have to use only the word not right after have. We haven't got to pay for the food, all right? Do you understand the negative form when using have to and have got to? Do we understand? Yes, so, so? Yeah. <laughs> all yes. right, very good, all right, that's okay. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll have plenty of exercises, all right have got to and have to meaning they mean obligation all right when you listen to me for example say you have to finish the platform it's an obligation you've got to finish uh, you have to uh you have got to finish the platform it's an obligation all right or when your boss or your supervisor says you have to um give me the report you're obligated to give him a report or give her the report all right so it means obligation both of them the difference is the informality, all right? But the rest is the same. Very good. Someone to read this one for me. Picture. Yes, go ahead. Have got to and have to meaning obligation. Have got to is used to refer to obligations which come from outside the speakers. You've got to drive more slowly. We're in a 30 mile an hour song. I've got to pay extra rent now because my friend has left the apartment. Mm -hmm. Spoken English. In speaking, have got to is more common than have to when talking about obligation. A, 
Let's clean this kitchen up. We've just got to try to clean it a bit more. Yes, at least once a week, it needs a good clean. All right, thank you. All right, so what they are telling you here is that have, have to or have got to, they both refer for obligations or they refer to like something that you're obligated to do, all right? And this obligation doesn't come from you. It comes from the outside, like an outside speaker. Someone telling you, your teacher, your boss, your mom, your wife, your husband, um, your brother, your sister, your supervisor. They are telling you that it's an obligation for you to do it. All right. When you were younger and you were little, maybe your mom or your dad or your grandma or your grandpa, whoever you grew up with, they probably said, you have to clean up your room. All right. You've got to clean it up. All right. So that's it was an obligation for you given by someone else. All right. Sometimes you say, I have to do this. All right. But it's not like when you speak it like that. But usually the obligations come from someone else. All right, from like I said, someone that is giving you or telling you that you're obligated to do this. Okay, now spoken English, as you notice, have got to is more common than have to when talking about obligation. Why? Because it's a little bit more informal, and usually we surround ourselves of people we know of our friends, of our relatives, of people that we trust, all right? So that's why have got to is a little bit more informal, therefore is more common, all right? Do you understand the difference? If you notice here in this conversation, probably like two people are like talking, maybe two sisters, maybe two brothers, two friends, or like mom and, and daughter or dad and son and says, let's clean up this kitchen. We've just got to try to clean it a bit more, all right? So they're talking and they're using uh, have got to. In this case, they added just, but it's just like a compliment for that extra uh, word for that sentence, all right, for that expression. But the idea is have got to, always, all right? If you notice, just like be allowed to is always together, have got to is always together always 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 this one will change if you're talking about he she or it all right but the rest is the same i don't know here um uh, before we finish i know we have like one more minute before we finish i want you to see this have got to and have to the tense warning and this is very important have got to can only be used in the present. The expression have got to only in the present. But have to can be used in a variety of forms. All right. If you notice, you say I've got to study for the exam. Whoops, sorry. I've got to study for the exam. You don't say I've got to study for the exam. This would be past. That's not possible. I'll have to got to study for the exam, that's not possible. Have got to is only used in the present, all right? But have to, just have to, you can use it in the present, in the past, in the past perfect, where I, however you want it. I have to study for the exam, I had to study for the exam yesterday, I will have to study for the exam tomorrow, she has to call her parents by 10, she had that to go and then you can see there are like other ways of using it but have got to only in the present tense okay that is something for you to remember always if you want to use like something for obligation in the past you say oh i had i remember i had to clean up my room okay then you have to in the simple past i had to clean my room when i was younger all right so this one, yeah, this one changes tenses. This one doesn't, it's only in the present, okay? All right, tomorrow we'll have like some exercises about that, all right? And then we can talk about it a little bit more. All right, do you have any questions? Remember that tomorrow we'll keep on talking about this. Questions right now, guys? No questions? All right, very no good. Oh, no, Excellent, no. guys. I'm going to send the presentation right now after we finish. <laughs> Please. Yes, I will. I will. I will. I will. Carlita Beatriz Aguilar. Carla Beatriz Aguilar. Present. 
Verónica Beatriz Celso. Present. Osmani Exaú de León. Here. Uh, Vania Itzel de Eras de Cañas. I'm here. Thank you. Blanca Estela Marroquín, she texted me, she had to go to the doctor. Franklin de Jesús Martínez. Present. Thank you, Franklin. Carla Joana Martínez. Okay. Giovanni Alberto Orantes Flores. Present. Thank you. Uh, Gabriela Beatriz Reyes Ramírez. Present. Dalila Estela uh, Silva Morán. María Araceli González Flores. Present. Thank you. Cine Elizabeth Mejía. Sofía Guadalupe Hernández. Present. Juan Carlos Molina Martínez. All right. Claudia Iliana Casun. Present. Brenda Lucía Rosales Guzmán. <clears throat> Karen Lisset Reyes. And Francisco Isaac Cabrera Mestizo. Present teacher. Thank you. All right, guys. So thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. And I'm sending the presentation right now. All right. Have a great see day, you, guys. Teacher. See you. See Bye. You. Have a great day. Teacher. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Yes. <coughs> eh, quería, quería mencionarle, estoy teniendo problemas con la plataforma. Ah, ok. Porque es, tengo, este, veo los videos y me dice que tengo que dejar algo o hacer mm. eh, el ejercicio, pero mm -hmm. no me aparece para hacerlo. O sea, no me da la opción de, de dar mi respuesta. Describirla, de Araceli, abajo. Ajá, describir, de ajá. Solo me parece el. Las cajitas, las caji, cajita, las, sí, sí, sí. las opciones de Next y uh -huh. del Previews, pero no puedo. En esa, hacerlo. Araceli. Ajá. Es, esa parte. Uh -huh. No le da el, el Other Post. No, no me aparece nada de eso. Me aparece hasta abajo el Previews ah, el preview, y el Next. next. Y ah, hay okay. varias así, entonces, okay. ahí revisando, estoy bien baja, ¿verdad? En eso supongo yo que es por esto, uh -huh. pero no me había fijado. Fíjese que, de hecho, Araceli, esto que está aquí es extra, no tiene nada que ver con el puntaje de la plataforma, de los ejercicios, ¿verdad? Esto que está acá es más para que usted practique, digamos, por ejemplo, usted podría poner aquí, I am not allowed to uh, wear jeans at my job, all right pero no tiene nada que ver con el puntaje de los ejercicios en sí. Esto es más para que usted practique como una ex actividad extra. Pero, este, ay, no sé por qué, este, si veo yo el, 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 el progreso. Eh, lo, lo, ajá, el progreso. Ajá. Hay veces que me parece como que no he hecho nada, entonces... Y me parece bien bajo, un 13% me parece. Y, y digamos que ya la ha terminado, Araceli. Y le aparece sí, un 13%. Ah, o sea, sí, o sea, mmm, sí, no lo he o sea, no he hecho eso porque ah. no me aparece la opción. Claro, claro. Uh -huh, uh -huh. ¿Sabe qué? Déjeme verlo, sí, lo voy a... Estoy asumiendo eso. Ajá, le voy a, sí, de hecho esos, esos uh, other posts no tienen, como le digo, no tienen nada que ver con el, el resultado, digamos, de la plataforma en sí. Pero déjenme pasarlo a, a inglés corporativo, a la licenciada Elena, para que tome nota y revisemos ahí por qué no le está sumando el porcentaje. Oye, ¿hasta, hasta okay, dónde ha terminado, sí. Araceli? ¿Se recuerda? Híjole, llegué hasta el 3.6, creo que era el 3.7. Ah, okay. Hasta ayer estaba avanzando. Sí. Y, ¿Y pero le también eso? Ahí hay... ¿Mande? Y le sucedía eso, le digo, que el, el porcentaje no le marca. Ajá, sí, no, no aparece. Ok. Y si, y si veía los progresos, ajá, mm. hay unas opciones que me parecen a cero. O sea, no, no mm. hay ningún tipo de avance. Ah, ok. Okay. Y este, ayer estaba viendo un, eh, teníamos que leer y contestar unas respuestas. Entonces, uh -huh. eh, lo he contestado, he dado eh, varias respuestas, pero igual ninguna me las acepta, aunque yo 
yo, aunque yo sé que esa es la respuesta. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Vale, ¿sabe, que, sabe, sabe que si gusta, mándeme cuando pueda a mi WhatsApp personal eh, o a mi número eh, la captura de esa lectura para verla yo y luego y ayudarle ahí para ver cuál sería, o revisar igual la plataforma, ¿verdad? Para poder ayudarle ahí a la hacer. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. Ok. Ok, igual le voy a comentar a la link Elena para ver, uh, por qué, uh, para que revisemos por qué no le está sumando ahí los porcentajes que tendría que estar sumando. A veces lo que pasa es que se satura, entonces tarda en sumar, pero igual es de ver, hoy hay que revisarla. Ok. Ok, excelente, Araceli, gracias. Gracias, Tich. Ok, have a nice day, Araceli. Thank you, bye Thank bye. Thank you, bye. <laughs>